Hi everybody. Welcome to the talk, Rule-Based Event Management uh, with OpenMS. As the title already describes, I'm going to talk about event management. And as you um, know, event management is a key uh, or is a discipline of the um, service or operation part in ITIL version 3. Um, but what does it mean or what does event management mean in context of OpenMS and how can we practice it? My aim is to clarify um, this uh, question and um, by giving you an overview of what kind of um, basic features OpenMS has to offer and um, what kind of advanced capabilities we have um, for this task. This presentation is the um, foundation for the tomorrow's workshop where I'll show you some examples in practice. Let me introduce myself. My name is Marco Schneider. I work for the R&V Insurance in Wiesbaden. I have more than 10 years of experience in implementation, customization, and integration of IT operations management solutions. Um, together with my colleagues, I've started an open source project at the beginning of this year. The name of the project is Rapid ECA, and it's focused on event correlation and analysis. So if you are interested, you'll find some more information about it on the internet on the uh, rapideca.org. Let's start by having a look at the agenda. I've divided my talk into um, five parts. Um, in the first part, uh, we take a closer look at the uh, point, um, what does event management uh, with OpenMS means, or more precisely, what is the difference between an event what is, and an alarm? and what kind of rules we have here. Um, then it follows a brief overview of the Drool's business logic integration platform. Um, in part three, I will cover the core concept of Drool's expert. And furthermore, I will describe the rule, um, Drool's rule language. Then in part um, four, um, I will show you step by step how we can activate um, Drools in OpenMS, and um, I will give you, or I will show you a simple example how we can uh, check that Drools is running, up and running. Finally, um, I will uh, give you, or I will ma um, show you what we will do tomorrow in the workshop. I will give a short um, over um, preview. And I will show you a list of links where you can find some more information. <coughs> when I thought about the, um, or when I thought about um, event management with OpenS, I asked myself, what are the main uh, to-dos here? Um, and are these to-dos event or alarm-based? Um, so I've created a best practice event flow um, that I've categorized, uh, that I've uh, divided into different categories. And uh, that's what you are seeing here. This different, or the order of the um, different categories uh, shows an optimized way how to, um, how we can process events with OpenMS. So, in the first category, uh, or the first thing we have done, uh, we have, we have to do is validation and mapping, followed by a duplicate detection where we um, generate alarms where we try to find duplicates uh, for increasing uh, the repeat count of alarms. Um, also, we want to do correlation. So we have a correlation automation category here. We want to do, uh, we want uh, uh, update alarms, we want clear alarms, and we want uh, run automations. And correlation and automation is a category uh, where we can use rules for. Um, yeah for um, more complex event sequences. In most of the environments, uh, we find uh, trouble tickets uh, systems, so we have the need to um, create tickets. And in difference to the um, previous categories, we basically, or we should generate um, or create uh, tickets based on alarms. And um, we want to get notification when our automation fails to recover um, the normal state. 
And also, we want to run escalation when we can't solve incidents in the estimated time. I hope that gives you a brief overview of the um, um, of the topic event management and what and what kind of uh, to dos we um, found here. We find here, but the, this presentation uh, focuses only uh, the first uh, three categories. So basically, we have to think about what's an or we have to clarify the question: What's an event? Um, generally speaking, an event is an indication of something that has happened. We have two types of event in uh, events in OpenMS: internal events for managing OpenMS and external events for managing our IT operations. Um, Taurus has shown this uh, yesterday. Um, uh, we have to uh, define events in the event configuration files. Also, we can define different properties uh, in events for sending our customer information with an event. OpenMS receives um, events on port um, on uh, port 5817, um, or you can use a RESTful interface. Also, we have sent uh, client scripts, sent event PL, and sent rep PL. The, end, the event anatomy looks like the following one. Um, event is defined as XML. Uh, we have different tags here. We have a new UI um, that should be unique. An event label, description, log message, different uh, varieties, alarm, date, uh, operator instruction, mouse over text, and what's very interesting, auto action, so that we can uh, script that, basic, uh, that are stored locally on the OpenMS server. What is an alarm? Alarm are generated by events, um, and the reduction key identifies the event as an alarm. We have three kinds, uh, or, and uh, the alarms are processed by alarm D. We have three, time, uh, three types of alarms. Uh, problem alarms that have a possible resolution, then the resolution um, event or alarm. And we have uh, the third one is um, uh, alarms that have no possible resolution. So events are linked to alarms. When you click on the counter in the alarm view, you get all the um, uh, events that belongs to a specific alarm. And then alarms are cleared, um, or cleared alarms are removed automatically from the DB. What's very interesting here um, is that we have four kind of rules in the alarm data tag. Um, yeah, I would call it rules. We have a reduction key, what is similar to a duplicate detection rule. Um, a clear key, what is a clearing rule? Also, we have a grooming rule with the auto a clean tag, and and we can run change rules with the update field tag. Also, we have the possibility to acknowledge alarms in the alarm view. We can clear alarms and we can escalate alarms. And um, it's very important that you don't acknowledge clear alarms. Because um, that's what um, Jeff um, documented on the uh, wiki. Because um, if you w want an alarm to go away, it should be cleared and unacknowledged. So keep that in mind when you uh, play around with events and alarms. I've tried to create. Um, yeah, uh, I create some in the event categories, I create uh, different symbols here uh, for, and that's the main point of this slide, um, for a problem event, for a resolution event, and for a symptom event. So the idea here was um, to, yeah, to have symbols um, that help us to display the event relationships. And that's uh, what we are seeing on the next slide. So um, we have, that's a very Simple event sequence, we have a problem event, and we have a resolution event. And a an very important fact here, or um, aspect here is um, that the clear key um, must be similar to the reduction key. Um, if that's not the case, um, OpenMS detects no relation between these two, kind of, uh, two kinds of events. 
This is only a preview for the tomorrow's workshop where we um, implement a more complex uh, event sequence. And I'm sure um, you have seen uh, such a kind of event sequences um, very often in, your, in the field or in your uh, IT environment. Um, so that's only an idea. We have seen a, a very simple event sequence, and that's an example for a more complex event sequence. Yeah, but we, I will show you tomorrow in the workshop how we can um, implement these event sequences, event sequence with rules. That was the first part of my uh, presentation. Now we come to the um, rules platform overview. Tools consist of six uh, modules. Um, it's expert, it's fusion, and it's the business process uh, management tool. It's planner, governor, and abifier. And then we talk about the implementation of um, tools in OpenMS, then we talk basically about expert. Um, it's the expert is the uh, basic rule engine, the uh, or the core of the business logic integration platform, and it operates on a set of data called facts. An effect in our um, use, uh, or in, in the context of OpenMS, is mostly an event. Fusion. Fusion can define relationships between facts over the time. It supports and complex event processing. Another word for complex event processing is event stream processing. So we have sliding windows here, uh, sliding windows here, and temporal operators. So, uh, what's the typical use case for fusion? Um, for example, uh, when you um, want to measure your CPU, and you only want to generate an event when your CPU is uh, over 100% um, in uh, five times over 100 percent five times in a in a 60 seconds, for example, then that's a typical use case for fusion. JPM. With JPM, you can create um, um, more co or compl uh, business processes, and it can be integrated with almost all the other modules um, that you have seen. And you have. Um, very good um, editors here, web-based editors and um, Eclipse-based editor for designing your workflows or uh, business processes. A typical um, use or a use case in the monitoring field for uh, JPM it could be if you want to um, build a runbook automation. Yeah, planner. Planner is used to optimize automated planning problems. So combine, uh, combine search algorithm with the core of the rule engine. And what's the um, typical use case for Planner? You know this um, uh, from your navigation system. If you want to find the shortest way between folder and, uh, folder and another destination, for, for example. Yeah. Um, that's what, what Planner does here. It finds an optimal the optimized uh, route. Governor. Governor is a very interesting uh, module because you can um, manage your knowledge bases with Governor and you have a web-based GUI for uh, doing this. Also, you can uh, create rules um, with the, um, by using the web-based GUI and you can uh, run a version management of all the, um, of all your rules or knowledge bases. A typical use case for a governor would, could be if you have multiple OpenMS instances and you have to, um, have to manage all or, um, a lot of different, uh, rule bases for all the different, uh, OpenMS instances, then, um, governor, um, could help you to do this. Abafire is a very new product of the uh, Jules team, uh, and Abafire is um, an Eclipse-like workbench. It's web-based, and it's built on a GVT ar array and ZDI. And maybe if you have the need to create web dashboards, uh, Abafire is the right uh, solution for you. 
but it's a very new project here. And, um, yeah. So that was a very um, um, brief overview of the Jules platform. Now we come to the uh, Jules rule basics. And I've mentioned it. When we um, talk about the implementation of Jules and OpenNS, we talk about expert. But before we can any uh, before we can uh, write any rules and uh, run or run rules, we have to understand the rule engine. So, and what we are seeing here is um, we have a production memory where all the uh, rules are stored, and the working memory where the facts stored. What is the fact? A fact in our case is an, for instance, an event. Yeah. And what does the rule engine? Um, uh, do here is um, or the first thing we have to do um, when we want to write an, an, a rule is to define a pattern, a rule pattern. And what the um, rule engine does here is to, fi to uh, run a pattern matching. So when you insert in fact, in our case an event, and you have to define uh, in our rule we only want to press web server down events with this rule, um, then the uh, rule engine runs a pa uh, pattern matching, and um, when it finds uh, an appropriate rule, then it uh, then this rule is executed. And um, also, you have um, the possibility to um, define the order how rules are uh, performed by the rule engine. And that's what the gender um, means here. And what is a rule? A rule is a basic, uh, or a rule is a plain text file with the DRL extensions. Um, and the package declarations much, uh, must be the first element here. The DRL file contains multiple rules, queries, functions, imports, global, and attributes. Um, we just uh, see in a moment um, the anatomy of a rule, um, of a rule file. And rules can spread across multiple rule files. So that's the uh, rule file anatomy. With a package declaration, you know that from Java, we have an import uh, declaration, globals, functions, queries, and rules. The rule anatomy looks like the following one. Um, we have a name. And uh, you have to put this name into quotes when you have spaces within the name, and we have uh, attributes, um, the things uh, or uh, the important attributes um, we need um, for our workshop are salience, for instance, That's, that means priority, uh, also we have a gender group, no loop, autofocus, and duration, um, and we have a condition part, that's what I uh, mentioned before. So there we uh, define the pattern. So an LHS uh, stands for uh, left-hand side. Uh, that's an ex uh, um, a definition you find um, in the public um, or official documentation. And then we have the consequence part. So when the rule engine uh, finds a, a matching pattern, then the, then the rule or the consequence uh, is well, the, the consequence part is executed. How does a uh, condition or pattern looks like? Um, that's what we are seeing here. We have an, uh, a field name, and we have a restriction. In our case, it would be a new AI, web server down. We have an object type and field constraints, and the whole one is a pattern. Yeah? Facts, you can define, or when you, um, facts can be defined as our Java classes. Um, and all the Java pro programmers know this. Um, um, we have a class here, we have uh, different properties here, and we have to uh, define our getter and setter when we uh, want to use this um, class as fact in the rule engine. 
or we also have the uh, possibility to um, define effect in uh, our rule file um, with a declare statement. And uh, when the um, rule engine loads the uh, rule file, then um, an appropriate uh, Java class is automatically uh, generated for us. Below we see uh, uh, only an example for a rule, change priority, but uh, we will go in, uh, or we will see uh, uh, examples on the next slide here. So, in the consequence part, that was the, um, um, we have three kinds of uh, methods here uh, that we can use to insert um, facts into the uh, working memory. And um, so we can use insert in our rule um, for storing, um, yeah, for inserting new facts in the session. So what's a session? A session um, represents our rule engine in our Java code or in our uh, Groovy code. And um, Modify so we can update existing facts in our um, um, in our working memory, and also we are um, we can uh, remove ex existing facts from the session with the tr a retract method. The rule syntax is um, yeah, it looks <coughs> like that you can see here. Um, we have a normal string. We have uh, regular expressions, we have date, uh, and we have a boolean, and also enumeration. Also, we have logical operators here. And, or, and not. Not means if we have um, no fact, or no, um, not such a fact in our working memory exists, Means we have um, least one fact in our uh, such a fact in our working memory. Also, we can use variables um, in our rule file or in our rule, um, and it's a common practice uh, that we use the dollar uh, sign uh, for a variable, but that's not mandatory. Also, we can define comments. And we can uh, use a package declaration for group-related rules. Um, and import statements for, um, that's the same as in Java, um, to import um, our classes. Also, we can define functions. And that's what you're... Uh, when you take a look at the example uh, rules uh, that comes with OpenMS, you see that, that uh, or um, you, um, in this exa uh, samples file, you find um, very often this function uh, print line. And uh, also, we can use different dialects. Uh, dialects. But um, the rules... Um, uh, the OpenMS tools implementation only allows uh, the Java dialect. But basically, when you um, uh, use tools, you can uh, use a Mevil too. And Mevil is an expression language. Uh, so you can uh, create sophisticated um, patterns. Also, we are able to define uh, timers and calendars in our rules. And so... Um, the first timer is um, when this um, event or fact is um, in a state uh, longer than five minutes and um, runs the consequence. Or we can, um, another example here is we can use calendars uh, that we only um, um, want to drop, for instance, um, events on weekends. And also we can use, uh, we can um, run um, cron, yeah. Uh, um, we can send events every five second, uh, seconds when we, uh, for instance, use the uh, timer uh, function here. So 
So that was a very uh, brief overview of the uh, rules rule uh, language. And um, now I will uh, show you step by step how we can activate uh, rules with OpenMS or in OpenMS. Um, so rules is a part of the correlation engine. And um, the correlation is, engine is not activated by default. So rules must be, uh, needs to be configured and OpenMS comes with, um, with example configuration files and then example rules. And uh, OpenMS uses rules uh, version um, 5.1.1. That's an older version of rules. Please? It's an older one. The current version is uh, 5.5. You're welcome. So, configuration. Um, the first thing you have to do here is um, you have to go to the example directories, and then you have to copy all the uh, example configuration files uh, to OpenMS Home ETC. After that, you have to um, edit your service configuration file, and uh, you have to uncomment the service name, OpenMS name correlator. Then we have to restart OpenMS. And then you can uh, check your spring log, and then you should see uh, the following entries. But for that purpose, um, we will see how we can uh, create simple rules so that we can check that uh, open, uh, that rules is activated in OpenMS. And that's what we are seeing on the next slide. So that are our first rules, and uh, we will repeat. That's the beginning of the workshop tomorrow. So we cre create our own example uh, events here. Uh, our own example event file. Uh, put a problem in this event or, or define a uh, problem event in this uh, event file that's web server down. And also we define a resolution event, web server up. Yeah. Then we add the following lines to the, uh, to the general event configuration file. And we sent an internal uh, event for reloading our configuration. So what we have done is we have defined our uh, own um, events here. And then we can uh, then we extend node parents rules. It's one of the rules that comes with OpenMS. Yeah? So we define a function there. Uh, or uh, within a r node parent rules, um, where we send events with, but we will um, um, tomorrow in the workshop I will explain it uh, much more. Or yeah, I will explain it much more. So the first rule we define is a web server down rule with the salience. The salience is not so uh, important here, but and then we say. When we send a node down event, and this node down event has a description um, or contains uh, um, a 503 service unavailable um, and the and a node ID, then send an event, a web server down event. That's very uh, clear, I think. And um, and also print a web server down uh, or uh, print this in the output log. And when we um, when we send an, an that's a web server up event when we send an uh, or uh, yes when we send an uh, node up event with a description text or that the description text uh, contains a two hundred um, then send an uh, web server up event yeah and print it into the output log so. 
when we have defined uh, these two rules or we enriched or enhanced uh, uh, and extend the node parents um, rule, um, then we have to restart OpenMS. So when you put, um, modify or change any rules, so you have to re restart OpenMS. Then we can send a problem event. That's a node down event. And what we get here in our event view, a node down event, and also a um, web server down, because we have defined the rules. That was a web server down rule. And this was created by the rules. And we see that um, the appropriate um, alarms here. Then we can send an, a node up event. And what we've seen in the event view are four events, two clearing events, and in the alarm view, um, the both um, previous alarms are cleared. That's, an, that's only an example for testing that uh, Jules is uh, running within with your OpenMS system. So, and also your, um, you can uh, grab for uh, the appropriate log entries, and that's what you are seeing in the log file. Okay, that was the topic activation of truths, and um, some more information. Um, in the tomorrow's workshop, um, we will um, see this in practice, the activation of tools. Then you, you already have seen the complex event, uh, the complex correlation example. That's what we will implement tomorrow with, also with tools. And an auto event example so that we use a timer based rule. Um, and um, finally, I will show you how we can uh, run tools with Groovy. And that's, um, and Drew, and when you use, uh, Jules with Groovy, that's very easily because, um, you can run it from the command line and you can extend, um, or you can, uh, check out the different, um, uh, Jules modules here very easily. Some more information, uh, some more information. The pre presentation, you can download the presentation. Uh, on SlideShare, then you should look, uh, check, uh, should take a look at the um, um, OpenMS Wiki, uh, events and alarms, and the um, uh, Druids correlation engine. And also, I would uh, recommend you to take a, um, a look at the uh, Druids website where you can. Uh, sh um, uh, I can read something about the uh, Jules rule language, and you find very uh, important information in the Jules uh, presentations. And last, and uh, Mevil is also very interesting because uh, the expression um, uh, on that um, URL you find um, some information how you can use Mevil with Jules. Okay. We have seen that um, OpenS comes with a rich set of rules for basic event management. Uh, then we have uh, um, seen um, that uh, rules uh, consist of six modules. Also, um, we've covered the rules core, um, uh, the, the core concept of the rules expert and the rule, langu rule language. And uh, we have activated rules with um, OpenMS. Um, so, thank you for your attention and for listening. Any comments and questions? So, please? Yes, I, I will upload after this presentation, okay? For Jules, or yes, we, we tried it uh, internally and it looked like we only had one thread, but maybe it's because we did not activate correctly the system. So, so maybe 
didn't analyze it, but uh, I think it's only one thread, yes. Uh, but, but I can't say it. Um, I'm not sure, yes. Okay, that's a problem here because uh, on the one hand you have your console where your operators work with, and uh, on the other hand you have uh, all the rules. So. Maybe you have to extend uh, the rules implementation of uh, yeah we find with open mess here. I, I don't I can't uh, say it. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but that could be a problem. Yeah. So you have, but I think um, you can solve it. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. There are already two experiments with high volume data, so a uh, high number of events. Yeah. Uh, just to explain, we do like the same same thing uh, within uh, the HP global infrastructure, and there's different levels uh, to do this. First is like matching regular expressions, then matching uh, according to database mappings, yeah. and then there's an automation layer, automation bus, which is very much slower. Yeah? So uh, let's say pushing all <coughs> into rules may cause some performance issues. <laughs> Maybe, but I uh, can't. Yeah, I've done. I um, didn't test it. Uh, this and uh, but um, that be, with all the correlation engines you find um, or you or you find in the market, you have always the same problem because um, you have to think about uh, how you organize your rules. So um, and. Um, the rules implementation here um, is, um, and that's what we are seeing tomorrow in the workshop. You can fill um, constantly your uh, working memory. You have to think about what we are doing with all the facts. We have to retract it. So, I think in the other case, um, we there is a problem that we can run out of memory. So you have to think about the event life cycle. Yeah? Run out of memory is uh, one thing, but uh, what's very important for us, we need to, let's say, um, within this local infrastructure, we need to guarantee that uh, processing, processing a certain event, even if we have an event storm, doesn't take more than uh, like five minutes, yeah? Due to SLAs and so on. So this is uh, pretty if you don't meet this target. Yeah, but uh, then you have to think about uh, your architecture. Yeah, that's why we have uh, different yeah. levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not, not all this uh, pushed into the rule engine or automation yeah. engine. Yeah. So you have to store uh, uh, to store these events before in a da database or something? Sometimes, let's say, uh, if you would have uh, a rule which is according to a regular expression, yeah. It's much more effort to process this rule inside rules than to uh, directly use the regular expression. Yeah. At the same time, that's what we do, uh, we can use rules for some kind of prototyping. Yeah. If to, let's say, to evaluate uh, additional expressions or additional rules that we want to implement. Yeah. But, okay, I think we can talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any question? What happened we start? Your memory, all, all the events are in, your, in the memory, and uh, you know what happens when you restart this. You have no uh, events in, the, in your memory any longer. So that's a fact. Or that's a today's implementation of tools in OpenS. Okay. Marcus, what do you think of uh, pulling these events out as opposed to using the event mechanism to push out the you know, run the rules engine on another machine even and just get the events through JDBC interface and pump it there instead of you know adding this into the inside open NMS which can already have performance you know limits etc. So I get concerned about building this monolithic thing, making it bigger and bigger. Yeah. 
whenever you get chance to distribute some of the function to somewhere else, then you can do some of the things like, uh, you know, because when you're getting the event, you can do some preliminary processing to regex, etc., and then put it to the, push it into the, you know, rules engine. You know, you, you have more control, right? Right, you're absolutely right, but uh, that's the, uh, today's implementation of tools in OpenMS. So it's, that's open source. And that's what Charles said. You are the community. So, and my idea here is, um, and to, yeah, to show you some basics. And, uh, for instance, with Groovy, you can make, make your own experiences. And you can, um, for in, I don't know, but maybe in the future we will see um, a better implementation that's written by uh, someone of you. I don't know, but um, Jules is a platform. It's a very complex topic. So, um, and um, I have to say, I'm at the beginning of my Jules career. So, uh, <laughs> um, you have you can Jules um, run separately. As an um, as an uh, server, so you don't have to put all the drool stuff inside of OpenMS. So that's answering your your question also. Thank you for listening. Bye. Thank you.